Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Many of you probably know that recently there have been a lot of people doing videos on the beta version of Photoshop. Specifically, they're doing videos on a particular feature found in the beta version of Photoshop. That feature is called Generative Fill. I myself have done a few videos on Generative Fill, although I haven't done any recently. And over that period of time, Adobe has improved Generative Fill quite a bit and they've added some new features to it. In today's video, I wanna talk about one of those new features, a feature that I'm very excited about because I know I'll be using it all the time. It's called Generative Expand. Now specifically, when I create videos for YouTube, I also have to create a thumbnail for those videos. And that thumbnail has to be in a 16 by nine ratio. Unfortunately, almost all of my images are in a three by two ratio. So if I want to use one of my images as a thumbnail for one of my videos, I have to crop it to 16 by 9, and at times that will present a problem. For example, I have this image here. It's in a 2 to 3 or 3 to 2 ratio. And let's just say I want to use this as a thumbnail for a video. Well, I have to crop it to 16 by 9. So I would load it in Photoshop. I would go to the Crop tool. Then I'd go to this drop down here where it says Ratio right now, and I'd change it to 16 by 9. And when I do that, you can see the problem. It crops away a lot of pixels at the top and bottom. So I often have to choose an image that will look okay with cr uh, pixels cropped away, or that will look okay if I move it around. Like this one, I'd probably move up, crop away more of his head, but it looks okay. Well, with generative expand, I don't have to worry about that anymore. So what I would do, let me reset this one, is I would again load it in Photoshop. I would again go to the crop tool. I would again go to 16 by nine. Then what I would do, is I would expand it out. On this one, I'll just pull the top and bottom handle down. And an easy way to do that is just hold the Alt or Option key and Alt or PC Option if you have Mac. Click on one of the handles and just drag it out. and It'll drag everything out equally. Now you see I have these blank pixels on the left and right. This is where Generative Expand comes in. With the Crop tool, just go over here and make sure that it says on this drop down Generative Expand. Then you could either click the check mark or you could come down here to the contextual taskbar and click generate. Either one will do the exact same thing. It will create three samples of the image and you could choose from those three. If you don't like any of those three, you could click generate again and it will just generate three more. And you could keep doing that until you get three that are acceptable to you. Now in this case, let's see how it does. Uh, here's the first example. It actually looks great. We have an empty bookshelf over his left corner. It doesn't look too bad there, but uh, here, we have some books in the bookshelf. Her hand, though, looks really weird. So I don't like that one. And here, this kind of looks odd over here. But, it, I mean, it's still... That first one probably is the one. But if I didn't like any of the three, I could click Generate again. Let's try something else. Let's go to this image. And I chose this image because her legs are here. Now, actually, it looks okay. If I was going to use this as a thumbnail, I mean, I would probably just crop it like that. and It looks fine. But let's just say that I wanted to make sure that I don't lose any of my original pixels. So what I would do, let me zoom out a bit so you can see better, is I would again just expand this out. So I'll again hold that Alt Option key. I'll be in the 16 by nine ratio, right? Just expand that out. Now we have the blank pixels on the left and right. I make sure that this dropdown says Generative Expand. And then I'll just, time, this time I'll just click this check mark. It's the same as clicking Generate. Same thing's gonna happen. So I'll click that. And now it will generate pixels for those blank areas. Now I've done this in the, before I did the video, I tested it with this image and right out of the bat, the first image was perfect. Her legs looked perfect. I'm only saying that because as is often the case, when the camera is live, it sometimes doesn't look right. That one looks all right. It's a little funky something maybe there, but we go there. That one looks okay too. And that one looks okay too. So it did a great job just interpolating pixels for where her legs are. Now let's go to this image here and let's do something different instead of this 16 by nine ratio stuff that I've been doing. Let's try something totally different because you might not be doing 16 by nine and you might be wondering how will it do on anything else? Well, let's just um, clear this totally. All right, so let's come in here and let's just move it down like that. And let's then grab this handle and just pull it way up. So I want to like a lot of sky. I'm trying to make this more of a vertical, maybe something like that. And then we'll click the check mark. 
and we'll see how it interpolates those pixels up above and let it do its thing. And you can see it put the buildings up here at the top. Here it put sky and there it put a building, kind of like that one, although the light I'm not sure I like. But if I didn't like any of these, again, I could just click generate and it will generate three more. Now, often when I'm creating thumbnails, um, I want a larger area where I'm going to put text or I'm going to put logos or something like that. So an image such as this, which is a three by two ratio, this one here, what I would probably do is I would go to the ratio and make it 16 by nine. But instead of pulling the top and bottom out, so I have blank pixels on the left and right, what I would do is I just pull the right side out. So I just have blank pixels on the right. Let's see how that does. We'll click the check mark and see how it generates pixels for that area. And again, this would be if I'm putting logos over there or I'm putting text or whatever. We'll see how it does. And then right out of the bat, it did fine with that one. There's the second one. Third one, I don't like, I don't know what that anthill is there, but either one of these two look fine, right? They look good enough for, especially for a um, thumbnail. Now, let's just say that I will have a vertical image and I want to make it a horizontal image. And I'm going to make it a two to three ratio, except it's not going to be two to three vertical. It's going to be two to three horizontal. So I'll zoom out a little bit so you can better see. I'll hold in my option cam my Mac, alt key on PC, grab this top handle, move it out like this. So it needs to interpolate a lot of pixels for this image. So this time I'll click generate down here. It doesn't matter though again, and we'll let it do its thing. And here's the first example. It looks pretty good. The soft box in the back kind of looks a little odd there. Go to this one. There's not too bad. That one looks all right. She just needs some furniture for her house, but that one's not too bad. But again, if you didn't like any of them, just click generate again and click and you'd get three more. We'll go to this last one. I chose this one because it's really a tight shot. This is often the way I shoot. I shoot usually real tight. And this one, let's just say I want to make this horizontal as well. It's currently a square image. Let's just say I want to make it horizontal as well. So again, I'll hold in the option key on my Mac, click on this top handle, pull it up. So we have blank pixels on the left and right. So it's going to have to interpolate part of her hand. We'll see how it does. I'll click the check mark up here and let it do its thing. And there is our first example. It did okay. Let's go to this one. That one looks funky. Don't like that one. And that one looks the best. Her hand looks most natural there. Looks perfect, really. So that is Generative Expand, a new feature found in the beta version of Photoshop. It is in the Crop tool. Again, it's in this drop down here. Just make sure that you chose Generative Expand when you're using the Crop tool, and you'll be able to come up with results such as this. Thank you. Everyone watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.